Yes, you can live in some RVs full-time year-round in British Columbia, Canada. I want to share some really great ways that we keep warm and toasty, things we've learned along the way on our journey to live a very simple life. Hold up, hold up, baby, I can sit beside you while you're going on about your simple life. Uh, I, I got this from the hardware store. They said everybody up north uses it. All the people that work on the oil fields and that kind of thing. And I know it's cold up there. So I can't remember what the name of it is. I call it shiny stuff. There's nothing behind this. It's just a wooden frame and then this stuff. And whatever, the shiny stuff. <laughs> and so that keeps your floor a lot warmer. It keeps the wind from blowing through underneath. It's, it's really great stuff. I, I really do highly recommend it. It's not that costly either. It's well worth the money because you're gonna save a lot on propane. This is the spare tank. I have three of them. I have to refill two per week in order to operate my propane furnace here in Canada. And the propane furnace is about half of our heat, I would say. Um, we also have an electric fireplace and I also have a little heater that I have underneath just to prevent any freezing of pipes and that kind of thing. Our neighbor did have frozen pipes one day. The coldest it's gotten so far is minus nine degrees Celsius here in, uh, this winter. So uh, this is like it's a mess right now, but I built this myself, can you tell? Uh, it's not beautiful. It looks fantastic. You know what? I, I built it on the rainiest, grossest day possible. <laughs> so it was kind of like, give it up. <laughs> I built some pallet style things across each side, added some planks just to keep my wood nice and dry. I don't have an indoor um, fireplace or anything like that that is uh, wood burning, but we do have the outside wood burning fire that we utilize a lot. Like we just, we use this a ton. This keeps all of the cold wind from going into my daughter's bedroom, which is up here. So this is, is you know, not as cold because the north wind is from that side. This keeps a lot warmer because of it. This is my little, my little door and you can get to underneath for extra storage, which has been amazing. Mm -hmm. I really, I, I can ship a lot of stuff. In an RV, you can always use more storage. <laughs> yeah, and there's just easy access to all of your plumbing and stuff like that. Too. Perfect. So, yeah. This is where the main propane tanks go. Like I said, I have three of them. They're just small little things, but they weigh a lot when they're full. Mm -hmm. And I can barely do this, you know. Um, so, you know, when one tank is empty, then I can just switch it over. And so I've always got a backup system going on here. It does take quite a bit of propane to live really comfortably. I like to live very warm. Um, so, you know, probably about $200 a month or so in order to keep really toasty warm in propane alone. The electric is included. And so therefore we try to use as much of that as possible, but the propane keeps the floor warm too and all of the pipes. So it's really important to always you know, have enough heat going on in there, even though I do have the electric backup down below, but it's just set on, you know, the very minimum because otherwise you blow breakers. Mm -hmm. You've got 30 amps to work with. That's <laughs> it. And I can tell you, when you start hooking it up a whole bunch of computers and washer dryer combo and, and want to vacuum and it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's Are there process. other options for your propane tanks if you want to get bigger ones? Oh, that's a really good point because a lot of people don't know. They say, well, just get a big one, rent it. You know, you can rent a big one. You can't. So uh, a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just get a propane tank that you can refill a big one and then um, have them come deliver it? Well, here in Canada where we live, they say that if your RV or trailer isn't on a foundation, they won't do that. You know, I just try to always make sure that when I get down to my last tank, I'm going to the local uh, gas station to pick up two, two more tanks and then I'm good to go uh, for another week. So 
it, it, it's it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought I'd blow up. <laughs> I'm not blown up. It's no, been it's all blown. good. Yeah. It has. So Good stuff. Every RVer should probably have one of these. Um, you know, I... I do have a really, really long squeegee, which is like 30 feet long, really great for getting the roof, except for the heavy snow, it just, it's not strong enough. So this thing is perfect for getting the tops of my, of my slides. Now I have to go up on the stairs or take a ladder in order to do it, but they say it's a four season fifth wheel, but the four seasons somewhere else rather than Canada. I can guarantee you, it's a, um, we you have still ten. have to keep the snow off of things. So, and, and when I get on the back of the RV, I can go up the ladder and I can get probably about at least half of the RV roof without actually having to go on the roof because my roof goes kind of like this. This thing is a must for all RVers that are living in this kind of, of, of a climate. <laughs> yeah. And it's great for taking snow off the car too. This is wonderful for that. So I try to make sure that the little gutters are always clear of any icicles and things like that because um, I can't really reach the front part of the RV with this. And so what has been happening is since we haven't had that much snow, I keep the bathroom vent open and the heat escapes and therefore it melts the front off quite well all on its own. I can reach at least, you know, the sides a little bit. So, you know, it, you, and if I get a ladder, I, I can do better. My ladder is really wibbly wobbly and it's not very tall. So I probably have to invest in a really good ladder, which I would really highly suggest to everybody have as high of a ladder as possible that is freestanding, um, unless you're really brave, which I'm not. And, and I don't want to lean things up against here because that could do damage too. I have awnings, but I do not put them out in the winter time because I did once and it went back in crooked and I had to put it out again and then went back in crooked. They don't like snow and ice and all that stuff. So this is a summertime thing. <laughs> the poop chute is <laughs> and so you want to make sure you have access to it so when you're building your skirting you have to have access you want to put a little door on it and I put this extra piece of cardboard in here just as expert extra protection to keep the cold air out so um, it makes it for easy emptying because nobody wants poop pyramids we've all heard about those <laughs> sorry guys it happens in an RV if you don't do it right this was uh, unskirted up until I don't know just a short time ago and I had heard that you don't need to skirt in your pullouts not so it makes a huge difference now my Mickey Mouse skirting here actually still works <laughs> this is where my my plumbing pipe is and so it's also it's also got insulation all the way around it and this is just a little extra and so you know Technically, I did this all wrong. Um, I will do it differently next year so that the snow doesn't gather on it and make it more slanted. Um, and then this is where my water goes into the ground. So this is a big Tupperware container. Ooh, and then I just covered it. I threw some pieces of styrofoam <laughs> and stuff underneath to give it more insulation. And this is the thermometer for my water hose, which I purchased. And it, it is, it's got heating in it. You plug it in, and then your, your water line doesn't freeze. Oh, nice. Now I know some other people that have had the heat tape here and that did freeze still. So I feel like it was a good purchase. It was like about 200 bucks. So um, this, is where, this is where it goes, is right in here. And this blue hose, I put a little extra 
foamy things that you get from the hardware store. A little overkill probably. Um, I tied here and tried to stuff in things because I heard that sometimes at the source you can also get freezing. Um, and so, you know, it, it's it's not glamorous or beautiful. Sometimes you gotta jimmy rig it together. That's right. <laughs> this is where everything plugs in. Rolled up some of the silver stuff and tucked it into any zones that I felt were getting drafty. The ladder to go up and shovel the roof off. The Tower of Terror. Oh, it is. <laughs> I did this section. I actually added cardboard to the back of it to try to make it stiffer. And then I, um, I made a little hole and then our puppy crate is in there. So when it's cold and he wants to be outside with me, I just, I tell him, you know, go in your crate and he's happy in there. So he, he loves his little zone. And it's all cozy for him. And it's a little more cozy. So, you know, I'll, I'll work on a better door system <laughs> for it. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is that in the springtime, the, the ugly addition that I did over there, I hope to make it into a greenhouse. warm up so we'll show you some tips from the inside if you want to live in an RV during the winter time in a cold weather climate then I really do recommend that you get one of these um, you, you know you see these in thrift stores all the time you go mm, what is it um, and I, I think what they are are to hang your quilts on uh, they're kind of an old-fashioned thing but I put my winter jackets winter wet stuff and also any laundry that I need to sort of be you know careful about drying I can use this as a drying rack we have a little electric fireplace I have no signal that you know does pump out some warmth that has a fan on it and so I can put this in front and warm things up really well it really does work great so this is my humble bed this is where I sleep I have a whole lot of fluff that I have to throw on the, the floor at night um, but I've got the Seagrow weapon for everybody that wants to stay warm in an RV because no matter what, up against these far walls, unless you've done some sort of alterations, it's cold. So I keep my pillows up against the wall. I have other pillows on here. I take the fluff off. <laughs> and then under here is my secret weapon. This is a heated mattress pad. And you plug it in. It lasts up to 10 hours and it's a sunbeam. It's amazing. Walmart, $100, so worth it. You save a little money on propane and have a nice, really comfortable, warm sleep. I have one for my daughter as well. And then this is the other magic weapon. Look at this fluff. This is, <laughs> this is a heated throw. And when it's really cold, I use this as well. And even if you're just sitting around, I, you know, because this is the couch during the day, it, if I keep this mattress pad on, it's, it's cozy warm. And then if I need extra, then this is also an electric blanket. I think it's also a sunbeam and really, really great. I, I think this one was about $70. So there's a little investment, but you know, it really does make a difference in your comfort level. Another thing is a nice, fluffy 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 carpet things get lost in here like literally you can you can lose stuff in here and never find it again <laughs> it is really thick and lush and we've got two of them and I put one on the other side as well because the pull out was really chilly like I was saying before I put the skirting on it was really chilly so we've got two of these so your feet stay nice and toasty and warm and another thing is curtains these are really sheer but they make a difference and i took out the original black blind that was up here because it didn't go down that far and this one i can pull like way behind the pillows and then that way it cuts out more of the draft and um you know during the daytime i can open it up and even this thin of a curtain can make a difference and you gotta have nice fluffy slippers if you live in an RV in the winter. The fluffy stuff makes you warm. 
It's just, you know, it feels so good. <laughs> and I, I just think that you can't have enough of the fluff. And I, I have quite a bit of fluff. I probably have too much fluff. Um, my, my, my couch is over fluffed. <laughs> never, never enough fluff. I, I don't know. You can kind of go a little overkill. Kind of like that, that scarf that you tried to help me with. Well, that's, I mean... That's poof. You gotta love the poof. I don't think that's gonna be a keeper. I really don't. If we go to like Antarctica, maybe. Antarctica is is coming to Canada right now. Look at it. It's amazing. It's so pretty though. We really need this snow. It insulates us. It it keeps us from from freezing because when the ground is bare like it has been, it just there's no insulation. And so a lot of people say just put the snow right up against your RV as well, against your skirting to keep it insulated. It just keeps us warm. Um, now, I'm not a hat person, but we wear toques in Canada. Toques, not beanies, toques. <laughs> Comes with living in the country. <laughs> See, I knew he'd be an issue. <laughs> part part of the, the 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 bundling up is I really like scarves, and I I'm you know I'm not a scarf person though. I I don't know why toques and scarves don't they just don't fit. Me. You look like a cute pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> Light and fluffy as it looks. Getting heavier. Like a little Like those doodle bops. Hold up, hold up, baby. I can sit beside you while you're going on about your simple life. Nothing left you thinking that maybe you're not different. 